Hi, let's continue our discussion on the Bayes formula. In the previous segment, we leave this as a problem. We want to compute the probability that uh, we have a spam email, given that we find out that the email contains the word cheap. Okay, and also this. Okay, what we know is that is we know the probability that a, 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 a random email is, is a spam and the probability that random email is not a spam so it, it's a ham and also the probability that given that an email is a spam the prob probability that it is it contains the word cheap and and if it's not a spam the probability that it contains the word cheap okay so let's uh, follow the definitions okay so we want to compute uh, we know that uh, this uh, probability of S given C equals the probability that uh, both event occurs, the intersection of the events over the probability of one of the the the, the conditional event. Okay, and and what we know is this. We know this, and let me uh, note a little bit that uh, the probability that we are in the first case spam, and the probability that we are in the ham case. They have to be uh, 1 minus of each other. So this has to be, uh, if this is 1.4, this is 1.6. However, these two probabilities, um, the the value that we used from the previous segment kind of uh, mislead you. And this can be 0.8, and this can be anything. It doesn't have to be 0.2, okay? It can be 0 0.1, 0 0.3, anything, because it's... Uh, it's the probability that you get uh, the certain the sheep word, given that we are in the, this case and that case. It doesn't have to be. Uh, it is not the uh, complement of each other. It's not like this two. Okay. All right. So let's try to compute the probability that uh, an email is is a spam, given that we know that the the an, an email contains the word sheep. Okay. So we try to compute the first one. Okay. So probably that. The, the both even occurs. Um, what do we know? We know that uh, you know what, what do we know? We know P of S, right? And we also know that uh, probably that uh, the, the an email contains the word uh, cheap given S. So so using the definition of uh, this, we know that if we can rewrite this as times probability of S times probability of C given S. Okay, and that's uh, if you plug them in, so this is point four times uh, this is point eight. Okay, so that's uh, zero point thirty-two. Now we want to compute the probability of C. It's getting a little bit harder because uh, we don't know exact uh, probability of C. But if we don't draw the Venn diagram, okay. Like last time, and this is S, and this is S complement, and this is C. Okay, so you can see that C can be uh, partitioned into two events. Okay, one on the left and one on the right, and they are mutually exclusive. So if we can compute the probability of this and that, then we can just add them up because uh, these two events are mutually exclusive. Okay, so we might want to write it like this: uh, P of C equals P of C S plus P of C S complement. Okay, and from that uh, you have uh, the, the one of the part is is here, right? We have already compute that. So this is probability of S times probability of C given S plus we can use the same formula here. So it's probability of S C complement of S times probability of C given S complement. Okay, and that's uh, 0 0.32 plus this part is 1 0 0.6 times this this is that right 0 0.2. So that's uh, 0 0.32. Plus, uh, this is uh, 0.12, and that's uh, that's um, 
but 0 0.44 okay so the pop this probably becomes 0 0.32 over 0 0.44 okay and and clearly this this is greater than the probability of getting a spam right because somehow if you don't know anything an email is a spam with probably like 40 percent however if it contains the word cheap uh, we add, we change our probabilities to this okay and and you can see that it's uh it's roughly this is more than 60 percent right so our belief change because of this uh, evidence c okay so what we have done so far is the following so we have some model that describe the probab probability of an event in this case uh, an event that we have the word cheap given that we are in certain cases uh, either a spam or a ham and we know the probability of being in a certain case so this this probability is, uh, is sometimes people refer to this as the prior probabilities okay and then we want we want to compute the probability that we are in each case okay so we are if you look at this we are either in the spam or we are in the ham case and in th in this two thing we can either have c or not have c right what we know is that we know that we are in this case either this or that we want to figure out uh, we are on the you know, the top branch or, or the bottom branch we want to compute the probability like that so this sometimes referred to as uh, the inverse inverse problem okay so you you have you know the prob probability that uh, the probability models tells you this way however we get some evidence right and and we want to want to you know infer something from this uh, back to this side okay all right so what we have just derived is the one form of the base formula okay so it's, it is just this expansion okay so uh, uh, probability of a given b equals probability of a and b right or probability of b so you expand this you get that and if you expand it further you get this and this is the base base formula so it's basically uh, how if you look at this uh, the right hand side you can see that uh, what we have is uh, a given uh, b given a right b given a b given uh, a, a complement uh, but what we want is is b okay a given b right so it's it's an in kind of inverse problem okay and and this base formula the names of base is is the name of this uh, uh, mathematician is he's a, he's a mathematician from the uh, 17th uh, centuries who solved this inverse probability problem okay so this is Thomas Bay so let's take a look at a few more examples um, so in this uh, this example one we have a bias there are bias coins okay round and you know that uh, this bias coin turns up uh, when when you toss it, it turns up here with probably 0 0.7 the fair coin turns up here with uh, a fair coin turns up here with probably one one half right so this is a little bit more and then you believe that with probably uh, 0.1 a coin is biased so not it's not that we have a lot of bias coin only 10 percent of that okay so if you just pick one coin and, and if you have not tossed the coin at all uh, so what's the probability that a coin is biased okay when, when you think about this this kind of uh, experiment it's it's nice to uh, 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 define the events that are related to what we are talking about okay so we have the sample space s of all, all the coins okay of, of our beliefs and uh, of the sample space uh, s and then uh, the, the the an event that a coin is biased so let's call this uh, uh, an event b okay so we know that uh, with probability uh, 0 0.1 a coin is by s so we know that probability of b is 0 0.1 and that's the answer of this uh, if you have not tossed the coins at all right what's the probability that a coin is by s however what is uh, 0 0.7 here right so this is the answer for that uh, so um, we, we, we're going to define another event 
edge. And this is an event that uh, a coin, uh, when you toss a coin, you get you get a hit, right? Okay. So you know that this point seven. Okay. So this is the probability that, given that uh, you are you have a bias coin, so you turn up here with probability seven. And if you have a normal coin, so it's not bias, right? So you given p complement. So that's that's the bias, the, the unbiased, the fair coin. Uh, this one is 0 0.5. Okay, so for unbiased coin, the probability that you get hits is, is a half. For biased coin, it's uh, 0 0.7. Okay. And, and, and again, this is 0.5, right? It doesn't have to be like, like, uh, zero, uh, 1 minus 0 0.7 at all. Okay. Now, uh, if you toss the coin once and get a hit, what's the probability that a coin is biased? So we want, we want to, now we want to compute this, right? So we want to compute the probability that a coin is biased. So, or it'll be in, in the B case. Given that, we toss a coin once and get a hit. So, we want to compute this. So we condition this probability on, on the fact that we know that we toss a coin once and we get a hit. So using the base formula, we, we can rewrite this as, uh, so basically this is the probability of B and H, right? So it's probability of uh, given that we are in the B case times the probability that we're gonna get in hit given that we in the B case. So that over okay, so the the what's here is is the the, the probability of getting a hit, right? So you're gonna you're gonna get a hit. There are two cases, right? So you either in the bias case and you get a hit with this probabilities or you are in the non-bias case, so B complement, and you get ahead with these probabilities. Okay, and this is just the base formula. So, so we're not based, basically we 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 probably we don't we don't have to remember the, the formula, but we just derive it. Okay, and so this is uh, 0 0.1 times 0 0.7 over uh, the same thing, 0 0.1 times 0 0.7 plus 0 0.9. So this is 1 minus 0 0.1 times 0 0.5. So that's 0 0.07 over 0 0.07. And this is uh, for 0 0.45, right? So this is 0 0.45, 0.52. Okay, so so the probability that uh, uh, you're gonna see this uh, bias coin, the probability that you're gonna believe that you get a bias coin, is, is essentially like something. This is like roughly 0 0.1 something, 0.143 uh, or something, I, I guess, or two. Okay, so um, uh, so it increased a little bit. Okay, from 0 0.1. Okay, so the fact that you see this uh, uh, coins flipping head, uh, it, it increased our beliefs that uh, the coin is, is biased. Okay. All right. So the base formula is is okay. Uh, uh, is 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 uh, can be generalized to to the case when you have more than uh, two classes. Okay. So basically the let let uh, the event A B A one A two up to A K be the mutually exclusive e events, so such that the union of them is sample space. So basically, you divide the sample space into uh, many events, okay? And then you have this uh, event B, okay? Now you know that B occurs, okay? So we in this case. We want to figure out uh, the probability that we are in each of the case. Okay, so the probability that you're in uh, case I is basically if you follow the formula and expand everything, you get this. And this, the top term is straightforward, right? So this is P of A I B. The bottom term is basically the expansion of B. Okay, so you get so this is like B P of B and A one plus P of B and A2 plus up to uh, P 
of b of a k, right? Because a all the a's events are mutually exclusive, then these are the intersection with b are also mutually exclusive events. So you can add them up and you get this. So this is the the general form of the base formula. Okay. So let's look at one example on this. So if you have any soccer, any uh, sport game, so a player is either aggressive or medium aggressive and and, and non aggressive with equal probabilities. So you are in this this case probably one third, one third, and this one third. Okay. So in a game, an aggressive player is more likely to to get a foul. Okay. So an aggressive player, a medium aggressive players, and a non aggressive player get a foul. It probably 0 0.3, 0 0.2, and 0 0.05. Okay, and and we know that a uh, particular player has uh, does not get a foul. So what's the, the probability that you you be in in each of the case? Okay, so let's try to compute that. Okay, so the way we get start is to define all the related events. Okay, so aggressive maybe uh, this A, medium aggressive M, and non aggressive N. Okay, so these are the events, and we know the prior probability that uh, they are all equals. Okay, they are equally likely m equals p of n, and that's one over three. Okay, and in the game, uh, you 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 don't get a file. Uh, no, no. So this say that you get a file with, with some probabilities. Okay, so let's define this um, uh, formally. So you get a file, so let's call this an event f, okay? So you know that you get a file, given that you're in the aggressive case, this is 0 0.3, you're gonna file, given that you're medium aggressive, so this is 0 0.2. And finally, if you are completely non-aggressive, n, this is 0 0.5, okay? Now, what we wanna compute is that we know that a player does not get a foul, so we want to compute the probability that we are in aggressive case given that we have an F complement here. Okay, and also uh, probably so let's try let's do just this part. Okay, everything will be the same for M and N. Okay, okay. So how are you gonna compute this? So you you have to uh, you can use the base formula. Okay, so I'll, I'll wait for a few seconds so that you can keep up and, and try to uh, get the expression for the this probability and then I'll give you the answer. Alright, so for, if you just follow the base formula, so this is equal to probability that uh, you in A, given that probability that you're going to not get a file given you in A, right? Over the same thing. PFC plus the bottom term is going to be the same for, oh, this is M. F complement given M plus PFN term probably dot F over n okay now what we got is this this thing okay but then uh, how can we find the probability that uh, we not got we not get we're gonna get a file given a so this is the complement right basically that so you have f complement a so if given a what's the probability that you not get a file so this is point seven okay and this for n This is point eight, and finally, probably that you are not gonna get a file given you in the normal, uh, non-aggressive case is zero point five five. Okay, now you can just plug them everything in, so you get that this is. Uh, uh, you can see that uh, you have one 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 third here, right? And everything here is one third. So you can just uh, queue them out, right? Divide everything by one third, and you get the same formula. But uh, I'm not going to do that, okay? So let's leave it that for for now. So this is uh, zero point 
seven over one third. So let's take it out for simply uh, for, uh, for seven point eight plus point nine five. Okay. So this is uh, this becomes something like a little bit less than one third, right? So because everything here is larger than 0.7, so you have something that uh, is smaller divided by something with more than three times larger. So you get that this uh, is is uh, lower, okay, than one third. Okay, so you can compute it, but you see that because you do, you're not going to get a file, so uh, the, you believe that this this is an aggressive player decrease. Okay. The prior probability is one third, but after you see that uh, this guy, this player, maybe he, he, he's a woman soccer player, right? Uh, uh, it's not a, a decrease. Okay. All right. So this is the question of the segment. Uh, you in the same situation, you have a bias coin with probability point one. Okay, and the the bias coin turns up here probably uh, zero point seven. However, you toss the coin twice. Okay. Then get two hits. So what's the probability that the coin is biased? Okay. So this is the, the, the question of the segment. I'll try to think about it and, and I'll see you in the next topic. Bye.